All right, so our main objective in differential equations is when given a first, second, third, fourth, whatever order differential equation, our goal is to solve that, meaning finding the original curve that the derivatives follow that equation. It's very important that that solution when we solve is continuous on this interval. And when we take the derivatives of that solution and plug them back in to the differential equation, we get it to reduce to an identity that is true. When we're looking at solution curves, it is important to understand that a function that does satisfy that differential equation might not actually be the true solution that we are looking for. Here's an example of one over x. It's a function. It might be true that when I take the derivatives of this function and plug them into my differential equation, that it works. However, that function is not continuous at x equals zero. Therefore, when I start evaluating the true solution, I may only want to consider one of the two pieces, maybe this one or maybe this one, depending on the situation and if any initial values are given. Let's look at an example and talk more about types of solutions. So let's verify that x squared plus y squared equals 25 is a solution to dy dx equals negative x over y on this interval. I want to point out that this differential equation is a differential equation because it has a derivative in it. It is first order and it is actually written in normal form because you have y prime is equal to some function of x and y. All right, to verify that this circle, you can see down here in the graph, this circle is a solution, I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x and then plug in. So I'm going to do that implicitly, 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. What that tells me is if I were to solve this for dy dx, I could move 2x over here, and I could then divide by 2y which gives me x over y. If I then plug in dy dx, sorry, there should be a negative here. If I then plug in dy dx after solving, I get the identity that negative x over y equals negative x over y, and so that's good. Okay, I get the same answer, and you can already see that here. Um, but this, if it was a little more complicated, you would then plug in what that derivative is equal to on the left-hand side and make sure that it's equal to the right-hand side. Now, notice this solution curve is not a function when written as a circle. We call that an implicit solution. And it is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. However, it is continuous. So I'm good as far as this being a possible type of solution. Just understand that that solution is not a function. 
Now, if I needed a function for whatever reason, I might want to look at a initial value or something that I know about the graph and choose one of these two, either the positive square root when you solve this for y or the negative square root when you solve this for y. The biggest thing to keep in mind here is we are just being introduced into some foundational knowledge. And so you need to understand that when we are doing the solving, you need the solution to be continuous. It is possible that it might not be a function. It might be an implicit solution. And we might have some more information to tell us, hey, only use this piece of it. Because of integration, we always have that plus C that you would have learned back in Cal 1. Because we have that constant of integration, when we back solve these differential equations using the techniques we'll learn in this class, you will end up having that whole family of solutions because you have that plus C part of your solution curve. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this example here that for a real value of C, the one parameter family, meaning that C can be a bunch of different numbers depending on maybe um, something we know about the problem, but that one parameter family, y equals cx minus x cosine x, is an explicit solution of the linear first order equation given right here. Now, since x, cosine x, x squared, and sine of x are all continuous, my interval that I'm looking at is all real numbers. I don't have any domain restrictions going into this problem. When I'm looking at this differential equation, first order, written in linear form, I'm going to need to figure out what y prime is to plug in. What makes this one a little bit nicer is it is already written in y equals form, so I don't have to worry about doing implicit differentiation. I'm just going to take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of cx would be c minus, and then I need to use product rule here. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first times, and then the derivative of the second. Let's clean this up just a little bit. C minus cosine x, and then it looks like this is going to be plus x sine x. All right, let's plug that in to our differential equation and make sure that I get equality here. So x, I'm going to substitute in my y prime. Minus y, the original solution curve. And let's check and make sure that is indeed equal to x squared times sine x. Here I get cx minus x cosine x plus x squared sine x. I'm going to distribute the negative and get negative cx plus x cosine x. And I want to verify that it is equal to x squared times sine x. You should see that we have some repeating common terms. When those cancel, I'm left with just x squared sine x on the left-hand side. And therefore, it does not matter the value of c. No matter what it is, this is a solution 
it's an explicit solution because it's a function. I don't have to worry about like a top and a bottom piece like in a circle. And it's a solution of this differential equation. Here's a graph of different values of C and what it ends up meaning for the actual solution curve. You would only know this if you had some initial condition or knowledge of the function. Let's look at one more example and show that both of these are solutions to this linear differential equation. Notice here I need a second derivative. So let's maybe call this y1. So y1 prime would be negative 4 c1 sine of 4x. And y1 double prime would then be negative 16 c1 cosine of 4x. Notice when I plug that in to y double prime plus 16y, I would get negative 16 c1 cosine 4x plus 16 times y. And yes, that does give me 0. You would do a very similar thing for sine, and you would get the same answer. So for whatever C1 and C2 are, both of these plug into my differential equation and give me solutions.